Now let's talk about something that we've been doing for all the past two years already within Cycle, I think, and not just with SXA, but also with, well, specifically with JSS, is getting front-end people, um, well, giving them more power, empowering them to make changes within Cycle even faster than before. Um, I think, Adam, this is something you can really uh, relate to, uh, speak yeah. to. Yes. Um, so a large part of SXA development and a large part of optimization is the giving the power to the front-end developers. But the front-end developers, to be really enabled, they need to have, like, in the C-sharp, it's, it's like normal thing. You just look into the API and, and, you, and you extend whatever is there. So with uh, SXA, we, we, to be honest, we embarked on the journey of providing full-fledged and, and very polished APIs. For now, what we did, we just went through our API that we have so far. We documented, we annotated everything. All of that is in our JavaScript. You can generate this documentation. It will be available on the docs on the doc.sitecore.net uh, site. But we've also uh, but we've also um, uh, embedded it all in the JS. And uh, in the future version, we plan to refine uh, on this so that every component has uh, proper. Uh, has proper uh, API, so on accordion it will be able to say, oh, I want to hook when an accordion uh, section is expanded or when it's collapsed and I want to do something or I want to block it or, uh, you know, to, to be able to create uh, front-end applications. Uh, however, the, the API that, that is here is actually already very rich. Uh, every component allows you to hook on, on initialization and you can, you can provide all of that uh, uh, all of that functionality already. Uh, we'll just provide them more granular events in the future. Okay, well, enough about documentation. It's not, not well, the most interesting part for developers, typically, right? That's well, you know, uh, okay. yeah, it, it's, it's always easy if you know the answer, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the new front-end developer workflow, which is something which, um, well, is it's a big difference, um, and as to post how you would do SXA previously. Um, I think you'll recognize this folder structure, right? The folder structure on the left side. Uh, you'll see it's, it's a theme, just your standard, well, Cycro uh, SXA theme. Everything's stored in a media library, all files, all CSS files. Oh, there, it doesn't I think play we lost well. the animations. Yeah, I think we lost animation. But we'll show that in a bit. Um, yeah. So that left bit is supposed to scroll for like two <laughs> minutes where you see the whole, all of the files in the theme. <laughs> and, then, and then it's supposed to show the new theme structure that we have. It actually is more awesome when I talk about it than if it's animated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll show the new folder structure in a bit, right, in a demo. So the things that we did to well, revamp the whole front of developer workflow is we moved all the Creative Exchange live tooling from, well, the media library, essentially, to NPM packages. Meaning that we now have an SXA CLI, a command line interface, just like, well, you would work, work, have if you would work with JSS, which allows you to create a new theme. It will set up the theme locally on your, on your disk. It will uh, download all the base themes that you might need, so things for theming, uh, yeah, for things for uh, maps, search, and stuff, stuff like that. It will download all of those to your local file, uh, your local folder, and there you can start working with all of your files. Uh, you can use your own tools if you want. You can use your own uh, minifier, um, whatever works. Um, that's that's fine with us. We don't need all of that no longer within Cycle. We're not supposed to be hosting those files, yeah. ideally. Yeah. We, I mean, we had a really hard look. We talked to a lot of front-end developers. We've heard a lot of um, feedback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we really onboarded and thought really hard and through, uh, through the workflow. Uh, there was, the, there was uh, definitely this one discrepancy where you would have things in items and you would have things in your theme. Right, and then depending, like, what is the source of truth, right? Technically, well, it should be items because they are closer to to deployment. But then those items are encoded, right? The the content of those files is encoded. So basically, instead of trying to 
cram the version control into Sidecar, we're just now treating Sidecar as the delivery mechanism. And if you look into, into the theme on 9.3, you're going to find it nearly empty. There is going to be just the pre-optimized main file uh, for the CSS, for JS, Everything that, front, that, that concerns front-end developers is changeable by front-end developers and is, uh, and is uh, controllable by front-end developers, and uh, that includes the, the optimization. Uh, we, we, we haven't removed the asset optimizer, but we have uh, restructured how it works. We actually did that in 9.2, but we weren't really advertising it because we didn't have the tooling. Now we have the proper tooling. So if you have, if we detect that the pre-optimized min that is being created, how Mark is going to show you in a moment, if it's in the theme, that file will be served rather than the optimized min that we would create. And why is that is, it's basically the C sharp libraries, and we we try to do good. We try to do to 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 help, but the C sharp libraries are never going to keep up with the pace of uh, the front end development. Uh, that is how front end development is growing. So give the power where to the to the people who 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 actually know what they are doing. <laughs> okay, so for the demo portion of this. Um, we wanted to do the whole CLI stuff, ideally live, but then we kind of figured, yeah, we're on a conference Wi-Fi. We need to download NPM packages and stuff like that. That's probably not gonna work that well. Um, so we decided to do that bit by demo of a PowerPoint. Um, so whenever you have it installed, whenever you have to add the, the CLI installed, which you can just download, uh, if, uh, use NPM to install locally, you can execute the command SXA new and then your theme name, in this case, Symposium 2019. Truly JSS style. Yeah. <laughs> then it will ask you for some settings. Um, things like, what's your instance URL? What's your username, your password? Uh, what's the path where we need to store your themes within Sidecore? So that's uh, starting from the themes path uh, in the media library. Then some more settings. Do you want to use search? Do you want to use the, the maps, uh, the theming? What the CLI will do, it will download all of those base themes and it will store them locally in your folders. So it will arrange the whole folder structure for you uh, on disk. Still nothing is happening at the moment within Cycle. It's just all on disk. And all uh, files will be, well, placed there for you to have fun with. Then, We'll have some more questions for you. And these are probably, well, these are new uh, in this uh, SXA 9.3. Um, the question is like, do you wanna compile your files locally and then uh, have all the files uploaded to the media library or not? Um, do you want the minifying happening locally or do you want everything, uh, all the source files as well uh, within your media folders? And at that point, we reached. Yeah, and if you, if you can, Come back for a second. You want to go there back? Is, yeah, there is, okay. Yeah, yeah you know I go, good. So, sure. <laughs> all of those questions, this is, those are, this is config really based, and, and, and we provide you with, this is the tooling that we provided, right? It's something that, that, that comes out of the box, but it's something that, that should be under your control. Any of this, uh, you know, there is some automation in here, but it's also uh, absolutely modifiable uh, through configs and extensible. Those are just granular tasks that you can add to or remove depending on your needs, right? Okay, sorry. Let's go to the demo before you kill the whole demo by uh, yeah, just yeah. explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you switch the screen now? Thank you. You see the wrong screen you want to show. Uh, Maybe you want to move it. Yeah, if I move it, then I can see it myself, right? Duplicate this place. There you go. Okay, there we are. So here we have our Symposium 2019 theme. Um, in my SXA instance, as you can see, I've already 
set up all of the local file structures uh, as well. Um, first thing I want to point out is that we have this node uh, modules folder here. There we have the SXA folder. And here are all the tasks, all the gulp tasks, and all the utilities that those tasks uses, um, and then run. And you can modify them yourself. So if you're not happy with the way how we do, like the minif minification, we use the, the clean CSS library, you can use your own library for that as well. That's all up to you. There's uh, a lot of power for you. If we go back to our theme, you'll still see the gulp folder. And in here, you have the conf configuration file. So the questions you uh, got during this, the installation of the, uh, of the theme or the creation of the theme in the CLI, all of those answers are being uh, well stored here. Obviously, we have all the default ones, like what's your instance URL. And if we go down a bit, for example, to our JavaScript, then you'll see here we have enable minification and disable source uploading. So yes, we do want to minify all the files locally. And then whenever we're going to upload it, we just want to have the optimized min file in there. Is there anything that you might want to point out here as well that might be of interest? Uh, it's, it's, should I? I uh, definitely, yes, I should. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so there is one change, one kind of uh, change with the, um, with the CSS not being uh, stored in a partial uh, files in, in your Sitecore theme. So with the, previously with the CSS being broken down in Sitecore, you could turn off Asset Optimizer and then modify the particular files uh, to, work, uh, to work with those uh, and then you know, turn it on and, and, it started, uh, and it started minifying them. You, if you work with the pre-optimized min, you don't have those files in your, uh, in your um, uh, Sitecore instance, but you know this is a solved problem, right? There, there is source maps for JSS, there is so, for JS, there is source map for CSS. So basically, you can achieve the same uh, by simply uh, creating those source maps, and you can even you know trace it back to the original SAS file, not even CSS, right? So all of that is uh, all of that is uh, baked into the tooling. Cool. So. Add with the demo, um, let me just make sure that my instance is still alive. Yep. So if you now go to the media library, I will show you the new folder structure that we have. Um, go to Teams. There we have Sitecore. And there we have Symposium 2019. And right now you can see there are just empty folders in there. Oh, and a readme file. But that's it. So whenever I now want to make a change here, let me first start a new gulp task and now open it up in the theme folder, otherwise the gulp task yeah. won't know which to update. When you're starting, when because you, we're still working in a, con, uh, in a construct like Creative Exchange Export, right? Uh, the gulp tooling still wants to, to work in, uh, in some folder structure. You want to start the, uh, the gulp task in, the, in the, the terminal in the context of a theme because it, it can work up, find the root of the, of, of the export and then uh, go back to trace all the files, but you're working in a context of a particular theme, right? So to know, for it to know where to upload things, you want to start the terminal uh, at the root of the, of the theme. Okay, so now let's change one variable. Um, so we'll change the mixing for the break desktop and we'll set that to 1200. I'll save my files by hitting Control S. And now you'll see that my change triggered the compilation of all the SAS files locally. So now it's all being break, broken down into an optimized file and the pre-optimized min has been successfully created and has been uploaded to Sitecore. So now if we refresh the Symposium 2019 folder, you'll see that we have just one CSS file here, which is the optimized min, and all of the source stuff that you had previously in there is, is out, it's gone. And we would really recommend you to work with this. However, all the, well, the standard theming as it was prior to this will still be working. There's no change in that, right? No, we're, in, we're not removing anything, but we kind of strongly suggest that, you know, you, you discuss that workflow with your front-end developers, because they, they're just going to be happy with this. 